Okay, I just clicked the go live button and I got my screen up. So what we are gonna do today is talk about how to escape the eight bar loop and build tracks using Ableton Live to make really fun music that you can get finished and mastered and released. But it starts from session view where you can jam and improvise, which is what is the best part about Ableton Live. There is my monitor window up. Uh, say hi when you get here in the chat. And if you're watching this on replay, you can always drop a comment to ask a question. I'm Steve Knotts coming at you from Pittsburgh. I remembered to put my phone on mute and I want you to be able to see my hands on push and, and on the keyboard so you can see that this is, you can just see what I'm doing. Um, I'm gonna do this at basic level for people who might not be used to using session view. What we're looking at right now is session view. This is, people call it the mixer window of Ableton Live, but it's a lot more. Over here is the arrangement. First thing I'm gonna do is delete everything in there. So we're starting from a blank page and maybe later today we'll record into the arrangement from the session view, but this is arrangement and session view. These two buttons up top show you or let you flip between them. And notice that these are a picture of Ableton Live. The horizontal ones give you the arrangement. That's a timeline, which is a model of a tape recorder, like a piece of analog tape with tracks and different sounds on each track. That's the arrangement view. That's the standard DAW viewpoint that's modeled after recording on analog tape, which is fine. Session view is the vertical lines. Notice that gives you the Ableton logo, the vertical and the horizontal, kind of cool. Those vertical lines are like tracks, which look like a mixing board. But if you think about a mixing board, the track has, you know, volume, pan, EQs and stuff. But up at the top, there's a little jack where the sound source comes in. You could think about Ableton Live like these each little clip is the sound source, okay? So this whole window of session view is all made of clips which play sounds that come down into the tracks. If I can make this a little bit simpler, let's just stop everything and just do a quick little review of some terms. So when we say track, that means each vertical stripe. Now people always talk about tracks like uh, a record that you buy is like, oh, that's a great track. So the word has two meanings. A track could mean a full piece of music, but when we're doing production, a track means a single layer inside your mix. And in these tracks, we have clips. So here's a clip. That's a kick drum. It's coming from a sample, getting re-triggered, it's a kick. Here is a clip. That's the bass line with a little bit of a scratchy kind of thing. That's also coming from some samples. Samples are audio waveforms on your hard drive, blah, blah, blah. And we are gonna get to building tracks pretty quick. Then uh, sometimes also we have samples that are audio. And just to show you one of those, like this. So um, inside your tracks, you have these clips. These little rectangles are called clips. And those are short pieces of music. It doesn't matter where they come from. It could be an audio recording, a MIDI instrument synthesizer, or a drum rack that's triggering samples that come out as a sound you can hear. The point is that inside the tracks, we have clips. And in session view, you have these clip slots where you can put any different number of clips that you want. So watch what happens with this piano idea. This was like the basic idea for the track. And see how the next one's blinking? This is a follow action telling Ableton to play the next clip in the sequence. So I have these four, it's gonna make a cycle. Let's just play through this. Now it's on the third one. Little variation to make it interesting with the MIDI. And the fourth one for resolution. Now it goes back up to the top. I launched the bass clip to add a layer while I'm listening. Hot tip, keep your global quantizing on one bar when you're getting started so that when you launch your clips, they always start right on the beat and they're always gonna be synchronized. Now I just launched the kick drum. What am I doing? Ableton is playing the piano loop. I am launching different clips to make it sound interesting. So if I was just jamming with my eight bar loop, I would be able to click around, fire off all these different sounds, and kind of have a really good time doing that. I just expanded my drum group of drum layers. What I'm gonna do right now is play the eight bar loop. I'm just gonna add clips, new sounds, and show you what's in here. And say hi if you're watching in the chat. I wanna know where you're at, where you're coming from, what level you are, if this is beginner for you, or if you made 29 tracks last month. I'm kind of subconsciously counting in the back of my mind, waiting for the end of the 
piano phrases. I think it's almost time for a crash after this resolution. One, two, three, four. Now, if you have a push controller, you might want to use the push to launch your drum clips. So right now I can do things with my fingers on push. So I don't have to use the mouse to click around, which is a lot more fun. Not everybody has push, but it's fun to do it this way. And we're coming around to the end of the piano loop. Next time I'm gonna launch the whole drum layers like this. I missed the button. <laughs> And then you can re-trigger, you know, if you make a little mistake. Doesn't matter, I'm kind of jamming right now. And here we have basically an eight bar loop. It's got this piano phrase that's going on. Well, each one of these is four bars, so technically we're doing a 16 bar loop of music. But basically we've got a loop of, of music. And you can play around for a long time in here. So one of the first ways to escape the eight bar loop is to make a cycle with the sounds, all right? A loop with no cycle is just like this. It just goes on and on and on forever. And electronic music can get really boring if the loops are not changing. So the first thing I do is in my basic ingredients of sounds, I make sounds that evolve over time. This clip in the bass line is called eight bar, eight, eight measure scratch. Listen to how this changes over eight bars. Two, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a little rattly thing that goes chicka 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 chicka. I designed that to give some variation. Now, here's another one with variation called the Buzz Riser, and it's titled 16 Bar Buzz. Let's launch that when the bass loop comes back around. Two, three, four. That's right here. This sound is gonna grow slowly, so every 16 bars, it reaches a little mini climax like a riser, and then stops again. You can hear it getting louder. This adds a kind of a sense of, sense of longer phrasing to give you a signal when it's time to launch a new sound or something. When this comes around again, I'm gonna launch the wave riser sound. Let me stop the other ones to make it really clear. I'll go like this. So this wave riser is one sound in three layers and it's gonna make a cycle. There's the beginning has kind of a crash with the sound of foam. Here's a riser that's a MIDI sound. And it's like a wave breaking. It's like a wave rolling in, crashing, goes up the beach and disappears. This is really valuable because this wave riser sound gives us an eight bar cycle. Every time we hear that crash at the beginning, we can add in a new sound to make the track feel like something's happening. If you add a new sound every eight bars, your track's gonna get interesting. So the beginning of how to escape the eight bar loop and build tracks in session view is, number one, make an eight bar loop with a bunch of different layers so you have sounds to play with. Number two is make a bunch of different scenes where we have different things happening in every scene. And then finally, you can play through the scenes going in order so that you hear new sounds on every scene and you get some music coming out. And at the end of this video, I'll play through this um, structure. I almost said arrangement, but that's not exactly what it is. <laughs> and you'll see that I have uh, scenes labeled. Start the song, opening, hi-hat comes in, snare comes in, kick, mute, that's like a little breakdown. We got drop two, breakdown, build up, main drop, climax, after main, that's like the dub section, and then mute down to the ending. And then over here I have some more pianos if I wanna fire them off. So what this lets you do is play through session view and pick the clips you wanna hear and make them into a piece of music.
One thing that if, if you're a beginner, a nice way to do this is just simply make two scenes. One is the main eight bar loop, and then the other one is a breakdown with no beats. Check out what the breakdown sounds like. Get the mixer back in there. So we have the piano part, we got this little synth thing happening over here. this piano cycle when there's the resolution, we're going to go back and drop the main 8-bar loop with all the sounds. Two, three, four. So the basic core of making electronic music is you have a beat with a bass line and sounds, and then there's a breakdown where the beat gets stripped out. If you can do those two things, you can alternate back and forth and make a really cool piece of music. That was a super quick flow through of the concepts. Now let's play around a little bit. After this piano loop, I'm gonna go back to the breakdown part and basically have no beats. doing on the piano I grabbed a little beat repeat kind of a thing happening over here so that I have some knobs to tweak and kind of have some fun this is where Ableton Live really comes to life using the filter. I'm going to filter up towards the buildup. All I'm doing right now is tweaking one filter and launching some clips. So if you have a push, this is a great way to do some live jams where you can uh, kind of do your drum thing. letting that piano piano dub just sort of jam out. doing some dub effects in the breakdown, and I have all these risers playing to tell me when it's time to drop the beat again. Now we're in like the breakdown section. I'm introducing some new sounds. drop the beat again. So right now I'm playing a track. All I'm doing is having a section of beats, got some risers looping that tell us when things are happening in terms of eight and 16 bars. When the risers fire off, I drop the beat. And then I play around with the piano. So if you're watching, hey Lightus, how you doing? Let me know if this is making sense so far. Just tell, tell me like a yes or something in the chat. So I know you're understanding. I'm not sure what level of users with Ableton you are. This might, be, I don't know if you're a total beginner and this is brand new and confusing, or if you're comfortable with live and multi-track sessions, because it could look like a lot to see on the screen. But the basic idea is really simple. We're playing a bass line and a beat, and then adding in other layers to make it more interesting, and then cutting them back to make a breakdown. Oh, I see the yes in the chat, thank you. 
Okay, so what I want you to do is when you're producing, start with an 8-bar loop and make one horizontal scene with all your clips in it. I don't care if it's four tracks or 50 tracks. Uh, 16 is a good number to start with and get just basically one scene with all everything that's happening in the track. That's right here. We've been hearing that. Now, copy that scene and make another one called Breakdown. And if you wanna copy a scene, go to the main scene and you can just do Duplicate, Command D. Uh, I'm not gonna do it right here because I, I already did it. <laughs> but, well, yes I will. Highlight, Command D, and it just cuts another one right down there. So if I wanted to make a jam to play with, let's see, that was my illustration one. The next scene, the breakdown, is just a copy of the top scene and I stripped out all the beats. So I went into all these tracks of um, basically the black ones, the kick drums and stuff, and I cut out the percussion so that when I play the breakdown scene, I get things like the piano, the synth, harmony, lead. Jared, thank, or Gerard McMillan, thank you for the yes. In my breakdown scene, I wanna have the, the bass line, the harmonic stuff, the lead instrument, and any risers. A crash cymbal is a great thing to have. And notice that the crash is also on a 16 bar loop. So every 16 bars I get a crash that tells me like, hey, wake up, play something. <laughs> I have this 16 measure buzz thing happening. I got the wave sound design of a wave crashing every 16 bars and the piano making this cycle, which follows a nice pattern. Now let's get the bass line in there. What happened? Crash cymbal came in, I launched the bass. Now at this point, you can build any kind of build up you want to get back into the music. You can start by launching a little percussion thing. And think about the music you love. What comes in first, like hi-hats or a little interesting sound like this? Boop. This one's called boop. And after this, I want only the kick drum and maybe the top loop to come in. So every time I rebuild this breakdown back up into a main drop, I can do a different combination of things and find out what sounds work really well. I've heard that wave riser a lot recently, so I think I'm just gonna stop that sound next time it comes up back around. So we can have like a deeper drop. getting a little bit tired of the piano and I mapped some controllers to manage the piano. Command K, key mapping mode. I put the letter C on my keyboard because when I'm doing a studio dub, I want to be able to mute that piano anytime I feel like it. So I can just hit the letter key on the piano track. I also mapped, if you check the delays, number three and number four on my keyboard for my delay sounds. This is how you can do a live improvised performance with really only a few scenes and a few sounds. So with my piano, I have the mute on and off and the letter C, or send C and send D on my returns. C and D, got some dub echoes with the echo plug-in, different times and echo compressor, getting those out of the way so I don't look at them, but I want you to know they're there. Let me just show you what this can sound like with the piano by itself. Delay, mute. space dub land. All I'm doing is muting the piano once in a while and adding some sounds that make it sound kind of cool. Let's play the crash and the boop. And get ready for some top loop coming in. Less is more with electronic music. Kick drum, bass line, a bunch of drum loops, and we are having a good time. 
Oops, I'm getting bored, I want some piano. And to take it a step farther, I put a beat repeat on the piano to make like a little looper. So let's play with that. And on the beat repeat, um, I have a little key B over there. Let me know if you like dub. Type in dub if this is interesting to you. Dub does not mean reggae. Dub means taking a multi-track mix, playing hide and seek, and doing some effects on there. Like I just did with this beat repeat. Catch a little piece of it. Get that filter going. When you hear the cymbal crash, launch a new sound. I'm gonna lock this to push three uh, here so that I can keep moving this knob when I go on different tracks. getting into it and starting to have fun. I don't want to like waste all your time just watching me press buttons. This is how I like to build tracks where I start with a simple scene of the music I want to hear. Izzy, hey, what's happening? Uh, I start with a simple scene of the music with everything. Then I make a copy of the, the music music like melody, harmony, bass line, and risers, but I cut out all the percussion so there's no drums clattering around. This is your breakdown section. And simply by playing between the main loop and the breakdown, you can do a great show. You can do a live set, you can play a track that's got an intro and a drop, and then a breakdown and then a drop, and then another breakdown and a bigger drop, and then an ending where you kind of subtract the layers. Drop, breakdown, back and forth between these two. Let's get mystical, it's the yin and the yang, bro. The drums, bang, full. Breakdown, passive chill out moment, take a little set, you know, sit down on the dance floor, think about your life, you're like, what am I doing? Oh yeah, the beats are coming back. Boom, back into the drop. <laughs> I'm trying to make it funny, but I want this to be simple in your brain that all we really need to do is make a build up, build a peak, and then drop a beat. And everything else in electronic music comes after that. A lot of people go to the timeline and they're like, okay, well, um, 32 bars is gonna be one minute at 128 BPM, so I'll have a 32 bar intro. And then the next drop is 16 bars, so I'll, I'll copy and paste and put that in. And then there's uh, 16 bars of this and I'll copy and paste and put that in. And it's like all this mouse click copy and paste mental analytical stuff. And then finally you go back and press play and listen and you're like, oh no, 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 that's not right. I gotta go zoom in here and like edit this MIDI. And you could take forever, like literally years, building a track in the timeline, stopping and starting, working on it. And it, it doesn't really feel like a flow. That's like carving a, scul a sculpture where you walk up with a hammer and go ching, 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 ching. You take off a little piece of stone. And then you go back and look at it and you're like, oh no, that's fucked up. Ch -ch 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 -ch. That's like sculpture, okay? Building tracks in the arrangement is like carving a stone with a hammer. Session view is like a pottery wheel with some wet clay and it's spinning. And it once you start, you can't stop. And you're like, whoa, this is moving all around. And if you have a feeling about what to do, you're like, I'm gonna stick my thumbs in the middle. I don't know if you have ever thrown clay on a pottery wheel, but it is absolutely a fluid, intuitive experience that comes out with some cool looking stuff. Does it look like a, st a statue of Michelangelo's David? No, it doesn't. So, you know, if you're doing super technical drum and bass and you wanna like plan out your track and arrange it perfectly, go for it, be my guest. That's not what we're doing. I'm doing tracks that feel fluid, feel alive, where you can react to what you want to have happen. And just like in a DJ set, if you get bored, you want to take the bass EQ out and then dump the bass back in, we can do that too with the kick drum. Cut the kick drum, mute, bring it back in, unmute. So I'm showing you an intuitive, flexible, fluid way to build tracks that can turn into a piece of music. How do you do that, Steve? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> you hit the big red button and you press play. I'm going to start with the breakdown scene and make a build up and get back to the beat. So again, all I do is press the global record button up top, launch my first scene, and then kind of listen to see what's going on. Let me be smart and make sure the piano is prepped or normalized or back to um, back to the beginning. So I turn off the beat repeat. Let me do a quick check just to make sure I know what's gonna come out. Oh, see, it might help if I unmute the channel, right? <laughs> okay, 
So we're going to start with this breakdown scene and then bring in some drums and arrive at hopefully a piece of music that people like and want to listen to. Press stop up here to get the transport back to 111 in the arrangement. Make sure that your loop brace is off. You don't want to record a loop on top of itself forever. Uh, we want to be recording automation. Hit the big red button. Take a moment of courage. <laughs> Press play. Playing around with some delay effects. I secretly got that loop going. What's a good intro? Remember when Kevin came out with the hand drum on the dance floor and people went crazy? That's the kind of feeling I want to get right here. Enough of a percussion intro that you, you know something's coming. I think it's about time to drop the beat. Yeah, you had it right. I'm not sure at what moment you typed the clap maybe, but that was the right suggestion. And here we are, we are already at three minutes and I didn't get bored yet. Uh, this might not be your style of making music, but I think it's super fun. Let's get that conga electric. If you have an audience that likes deep tracks with bass lines and beats, this is a really good way to build music. And I have some other piano phrases. Let's play with some of those. I 
just kind of created a drop by selecting a few clips and hitting enter. In. Let's build down to an ending. You basically do that by subtracting sounds. Now I'm going to be tricky and do a little signal here. Bring in a tambourine. Take something else away. Let's get the wave riser coming back. We heard it at the beginning, so let's hear it at the end. Top clue, do something at the beginning, and then repeat it at the end to make a signal that it's uh, coming to the end of the track. Mega beach vibes, yeah, thank you. Yeah, this piano is getting kind of spacey, isn't it? Let's say we're in the mix out part of the record. We got a new record coming in, a new hi-hat being mixed on top of this. It's gonna be about time to cut my kick drum out. goes off, we'll stop the bass. I think that's a good ending. Oh my god, I just did a seven minute dub. <laughs> Maybe because I was talking in the middle of it. Uh, so we just recorded all that, and you can see there's some automation recorded in there. So whatever I did on the keyboard and during the mix, got printed or recorded in, so we can have the moment of truth. Double tap on the stop button. Let's hear what happened. Uh, so what we just did was we took two scenes in Session View, the eight bar loop, and then a second scene with no percussion. And I basically created a track by alternating between active and passive, beats and breakdown, um, busy and quiet, you know, and then to make it actually kind of really sound fun, I took one instrument, the piano, and I played with effects on the piano. That's a super simple way to make an interesting piece of music where you're having fun as a DJ and a performer, tweaking a knob, doing a thing, and Ableton is taking care of the rest to play the sounds. Whoa, what the hell is that? Oh. There were some other things in take lanes. I had a take lane activated. I didn't know that Live 12 does that. I'm still getting used to 12 and the MIDI. Um, that was <laughs> some totally other thing. I, I deleted the arrangement, but I did not delete the take lanes. Interesting. I did not know that was going to happen. Okay. So here, this is the thing that I wanted to record. <laughs> throws. So let me know if you have any questions right now. I'm going to let this play back and uh, hang out for a little bit. 
It's about 12.30. I like to keep these live streams short and sweet and teach a few practical things that you can do. So I hope this is not too complicated. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the feel on this one. I felt good when I was playing it. It feels comfortable to like launch different scenes and stuff. And mainly what I want you to be able to do in live right now is build an APR loop in session view, meaning you take one scene, that's a horizontal slice of all the things. You have a different clip on every track. Kick drum has a clip. Bass line has a bass line clip. The drum group, that's a group track, has all these different hi-hats and congas. And this is really what develops your track. There's a little clip for each one of these sounds. Muting and unmuting these percussion layers is what makes the music come to life. We've got a synth up here doing this, that melody thing. And then the piano was the one instrument I was focusing on to filter and delay and mute to keep the music interesting as the bass and beats are doing variety. Now, if I really want to go into this, I could spend three months editing this arrangement to make it perfect, get it down to five and a half minutes instead of eight minutes. You know, I could take this and make a final mix and export this track for mastering. I could do that. Uh, the main thing for me is that I recorded it as a performance, having fun in the studio um, using Session View. If you want to know, like, to get to this 8-bar loop, I probably spent two or three days making sounds, doing sound design, recording my 8-bar eight eight loop things. You know, like this, uh, the riser with the wave. That one sound right here with these three things, that was like a whole night of sound design. I, you know, hanging out after work, spend three or four hours, I'm imagining, oh, I want to make the sound of a wave. How do I do that? I get these layers. So like sometimes sound design can be a whole studio day and it turns into this one simple eight bar loop of riser, which is fun. So build your layers, make your scenes, and then alternate with a scene that has all the beats and a scene that has no beats. And then just jam in session view, hit the big red button, record into the arrangement, and you'll have some music. It takes practice just like playing the trumpet or playing the drums or playing the piano. If you approach it like that, you'll get better at doing it to the point where you could perform on stage with your Ableton project like this, or you could do a studio performance like I did. Press the global record button, the jam out in session view, get all your sounds together, and end up with something that's fun to listen to. It feels alive. It has buildups, peaks and drops, breakdowns, swells, all the things that music needs. And then you can go into your final mix and export something to publish. It is fun that Live has the mixer in 12, or Live 12 has a mixer in the arrangement. And what's on my main channel? So this is like a super basic rough mastering for uh, the broadcast level. Lightest, thanks for watching. Izzy, thanks for watching. I'm gonna be done in like a couple minutes. Let me know if you have any questions. And, oh, let me show you how you can get on the uh, email list to subscribe and get notifications about my live stream schedule. I've been um, prepping some new live streams and you can get them uh, get on my email list from Gumroad. So this is store.mixatexture.com. I think I can put this in the chat. And you just subscribe up on top and I'll send you an email when I'm doing a stream, tell you what's coming up for the week. Also, I've got some live packs that can help you with techniques you might not know, like EQing, cut before you boost, EQ and filter types. We saw some of those when I was filtering with uh, the piano, like bandpass filter right there, high pass filter over here. And these are available on my Gumroad page. But the best thing is just put in your email address, subscribe so we can be in touch, and I will tell you what's going on with the next upcoming streams to talk about how to build tracks in Session View, how to escape the APR loop, how to have the most fun with Ableton Live, how to DJ with Live, and I think we might even start doing some track feedback where you send me links, I play your tracks and talk about what I'm hearing. Maybe the song structure needs some work, maybe it's too long. Maybe your mix needs some work, there's too much bass. Maybe your sounds need some development with tweaking filters and keeping the sounds alive on the fly. But uh, we've done a lot of track feedback in the group and I would be happy to help out people who are building tracks. Izzy, <laughs> wanna hear some music from you pretty soon before I get old and die. All right, I don't see any questions popping in, so I'm gonna wind down the stream. Thank you so much for watching. It is Friday, April 19th. Uh, actually, I have a spe specific quick question. Would you like to see a live stream every week with this topic? Let me know yes or no on the building tracks topic. For me, it's like that essential part of using live is making tracks, starting from session view and turning them into full pieces of music. 
If you want to see more about how I do that, I would be happy to show you every time I make a track, I can just run through and play it and show you what it's like, but I want to make sure you're interested. So if you're watching on the replay or live, let me know yes, session view, or no, session view. <laughs> you can say whatever you want, I want to know the truth. And that's going to be it. I'll wait a couple seconds for those to come through. Yeah, this is a long spacey dub jam, that's for sure. The beat repeat filter is what makes it exciting for me. Latest, of course. Okay, thanks for the answer. I mean, I know there are people who want to see this all the time. I'm just wondering if it's you or, you know, then there's also the question of what time of day is best, who can be online, what time zone do you live in? But 12 o'clock noon works for me. And I know on East Coast time, a lot of people can catch it on lunch or European evening. So this time zone works for a lot of people to get, or the most number of people to get access to it. I especially like the ending here. We build down the filter wave comes in. <laughs> you do you. Yeah, I do me, man. You do you. <laughs> oh, I need to return to automation. There we go. Oh, Lithuania. How cool. I had a really good friend who was a I taught at a school when I was in Czech Republic. Um, her name was Dovila Matsamayate, I think. Dovile. She was Lithuanian. She had such a cool name. It took me a long time to learn how to pronounce it the right way, and I don't know if I am, but yeah. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for joining in. And again, you know where to find me, Steve at Mixitexture.com. I'll see you in the next live stream. Let me get over to my secret YouTube broadcast window and end the stream. Peace, y'all. Keep making that music. And... Bow, bow.